Hi, I'm Anthony. Welcome to the Deep Learning for Network Traffic Prediction project presentation done at the University of Cape Town's Department of Computer Science. This is the DL3NTP team. Our machine learning engineer, Justin, handled the LSTM implementations. As the data engineer, I oversaw the data pipeline and stacked LSTM development. And our supervisor is Dr. Josiah Javula, who we thank for his input and guidance. COVID-19 has caused a massive shift to work from home and lockdowns have meant that people are spending more time on the internet. This has posed a challenge for network providers who need to balance their limited bandwidth and resources. Efficient management can be achieved through network traffic prediction and benefits include aiding in dynamic resource allocation in the short term and providing insights into the way the service can be improved in the long term. Previous literature has shown that deep learning approaches have outperformed traditional time series approaches with long short-term memory models producing the most accurate predictions. For SAMRAN traffic data, we will especially be looking into stacked and bi-directional LSTMs, details of which will be discussed later. The models that we will develop will be evaluated on their forecasting accuracy and their computational resources taken to make predictions. Computational resources and limited data sets are big limitations for less resource network providers. A variety of LSTM models need to be tested as some systems have different priorities. Hence, a trade-off between accuracy and computational complexity will arise. Our research questions include the following. Firstly, how does the SANREN traffic data vary with time and day in relation to the South African University calendar? Which of the LSTM architectures, baseline, bilateral, or stacked provides the highest prediction accuracy subject to network constraints. What is the computational cost of different LSTM architectures given a required level of accuracy? And lastly, how does changing the size of the dataset impact on the accuracy of the predictions? So this system was designed in Python using the Keras API and TensorFlow. It also includes a data processing pipeline and a preliminary data analysis, which was done using a variety of mathematical and machine learning packages. Essentially, given inputs from the data pipeline, each LSTM model is able to predict network traffic data to a varying degree of accuracy using a varying degree of computational resources. We wanted to reduce the complexity of the implementation, and so we used pre-existing LSTM model libraries and we focused on the hyperparameter tuning process to improve prediction accuracy. The SANREN sample we used had 47,000 data points taken from a week period. This is in comparison to 9 million data points per day from the entire SANREN observation population. And the SANREN data was extracted and cleaned for a neural network's input based on the TensorFlow requirements. And the pre-processing step included feature extraction and transformation, such as one-hot encoding of categorical variables and the removal of strings. But it also included the engineering of new variables, such as day and holiday, to answer one of our research questions, which checked the relationship between the university calendar and the flow of bytes on SANREN. And consequently, the response variable for the study is bytes, with all the other variables being explanatory and after pre-processing the data the data frame was condensed from 14 features to 9 features. After pre-processing I performed a preliminary statistical analysis to garner relationships and information from the data set before providing them to the models. If you notice that there is a 3x3 three three grid of strong correlative relationships on the right the negative relationship between bytes and date time shows that byte volume per flow is decreasing as time increases or as we move forward into the future. And the strong positive relationship between duration and the response bytes shows that longer flows generally have more data being transferred, which is a sensible assumption. On the left, you'll see the distribution of the response bytes. And as you can see, it's extremely right skewed. The outlying values were considered for removal, but we wanted the LSTM models to be able to predict the burst flows in the SANREN traffic. And the result of leaving these outliers in was that 
it under predicted the modal values, the more common values, and under predicted the outlying burst flows. And then on the right, you can see the bytes versus day of week plot. This is only done over a week, so it'd be hard to infer any relationships between traffic and day of the week. But in this small sample, there is no difference between any days of the week, as well as between weekdays and weekends. Just a quick recap of the difference between a recurrent neural network and long short-term memory neural networks. Essentially, an RNN is able to learn and retain past information in the short term, as shown on the upper graphic, where input X0 can be remembered by H3, the hidden layer, at time 3. But as the time gets longer between inputs and hidden layers, as shown in the bottom graph, the RNN is unable to learn distant information. And this is where the LSTM has been suggested to learn long-term dependencies in sequential data. Hi again. So the idea of a bi-directional recurrent neural network um, or LSTM involves duplicating the first recurrent layer in the network so that there are now two layers side by side, then providing the input sequence as is to the first layer and providing a reversed copy of the input sequence to the second. The architecture of a bi-directional LSTM can be seen on the right of the slide above me. Um, one hidden layer of LSTM receives the sequence of input in reverse, while the other does not. The outputs are then merged, usually using concatenation. The stacked LSTM adds multiple LSTM layers to a traditional LSTM, and this is implemented by feeding a sequence to the next LSTM layer, which requires the previous layer output to be slightly adjusted from a single scalar to a vector value. To assess the models, we used a validation set as a proxy for unseen test data, and the hyperparameter tuning process was done based on the results of prediction on the validation data, whereas the final comparisons between the optimal hyperparameter tuned models was done based on the results of predictions on test data. For these comparisons, the metrics we used were the mean squared error, the mean absolute error, and the coefficient of determination. Different data set sizes allowed us to determine whether more data increases accuracy and its effect on training and prediction times. Epochs signify how many times the model runs through the full data set. Increasing the number of epochs should help the model to learn and generalize better to unseen test data during the testing phase. Increasing the number of neurons increases the number of parameters that are passed onto the next LSTM cell, which will increase computational complexity but should increase accuracy as well. Our results indicate that traffic flow on the sand ran does not vary in any meaningful way on holidays, weekends, or just regular university days. The data size had little impact on the prediction times, but increasing the data set had a large impact on training time. The stacked LSTM is the most accurate model, as can be seen on the table on the right, with the lowest test MAE and MSE and the highest test R squared. However, the multiple layers added a lot of overhead and was the most computationally expensive LSTM with a training time of just under 10 minutes. The simple LSTM outperformed the bi-directional LSTM. It was more accurate and quicker to train. All of the models also achieved a very low validation loss. So, in conclusion, we were able to predict future traffic flows on the sand rim and we were able to answer our research questions. So therefore, we can recommend the stacked LSTM when there's no consideration of computational resources and accuracy is the most important aspect, with no regard for training time. The, L the simple LSTM is more suitable when there are resources that are constrained. So this could be for a less resource network that may not have the resources available to train a stacked LSTM, yet, the simple LSTM would be recommended since it is two times less expensive than the stacked LSTM to train 
and it outperforms the bidirectional LSTM. It's more accurate than, the, than that LSTM. And lastly, we found that traffic does not vary much. Both holidays, weekends, and weekdays all have similar traffic flows.